Exactly. This acquisition that we're seeing of the bulk portfolios, is it possible that may, it might make it harder for people to afford rental properties? No, I don't think so at all. I think it's actually becoming much more efficient. As more owners, large institutional groups get into the market, we're seeing more and more efficiencies and be able to run these properties even better. There's always been a lot of homes on the market. There's been generally around 11 million homes, and then we've added about 3.9 million homes over the last four or five years that have gone on to the rental market. So it's a huge market now. It's almost 15 million homes are, are rented are for rent. Yeah, at this point. So you, I mean, as you know, Mark had noted, you've been doing this for a while. You, you know, Tom, you and I have talked about this, uh, you know, even five years ago, I believe, is when you started doing this. So Cerberus now buying the homes, 4,000 of them. Are they coming in too late? I actually think it's a long-term business. It really, in the beginning, I actually really believed it was a trade. It was buy the home cheap, get a little income yield, and then flip the homes out later. Right. And a few years into the recovery. Today, I think we're seeing now much more permanent part of the population who are going to be renting. We, we're now back to producing households, 1.2 million households a year, and a lot of those are, are renters. But isn't that a bad sign, though? I mean, if you don't have people who are buying homes, what does that tell you about people's credit and their ability to save? Well, the credit markets are too tight, and that is true. But we are finally starting to see job growth. But what you're really seeing right now is the millennials who are starting to age to the point where they're creating the lifestyle of being in the inner cities to moving outside to the suburbs and getting that trade-off where they want to have a home. I think traditionally people thought you, when you move into a house, you buy that house. Today, people are making a lifestyle decision. I'm going to be in an apartment. I'm going to be in a house. I'm going to be in a townhouse. And then they make the financial decision about whether they want to buy or to rent that property. Sir, yesterday we did a story about millennials being priced out of some of the nation's biggest cities because of the rising cost of, of residential real estate and, of course, the stagnant wages, which Fed Chair Janet Yellen has ex expressed concern about as well. Last month, real estate data provider Zillow reported that in the year ended in April, rents increased faster than home values for the first time since 2012. So to Betty's point, if the rents are so high, doesn't that mean that millennials then cannot save to buy a home because they're paying so much money for rent? Well, I think it's all sort of part of the, you know, the overall cycle. I mean, we're starting to see job growth again, a couple hundred thousand jobs, and we're now starting to see that feeding into better and better. The real people were hurt, I think, the most in this is really the Gen X, and those are the people who came in after, you know, the, the baby boom. And so those people got killed because what happened was they bought at the wrong part of the cycle, yeah. and then they lost a lot of their equity. So they had about 60 percent of the home price on average and now it's about 30 percent. So those are the ones that hurt the most. So we're but, talking about timing then. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's about credit too. I think credit's coming down, interest rates have gone up, but they're still very historically low. Yeah. And I think there are a point in time when people will make the decision to buy when they can buy it. But again, we need to have the credit markets open up. We're starting to see government initiatives to start to do that, but we have a long way to go before we start to see it on mass. I thought there was a really interesting piece. Did you see this today in the front page of the Wall Street Journal uh, talking about the home equity loans that are now coming due? Sure. Uh, you know, so 10 years ago, uh, you know, you had, Generation X, by the way, you know, getting these home equity loans out on their houses. Now the principal is coming due. And apparently the delinquency rates, Tom, uh, have shot up, uh, doubled uh, since people have started to now have to pay their principal payments. I think it's something now like 4.7% of these loans are now delinquent. Right. Uh, is this a troubling sign here? that we're ignoring. It, it is an issue, but again, I think it gets back to the overall problem in the Gen X that they lost a lot of their equity, but we're starting to see a lot of home recoveries, and, and what will start to happen is as the home prices continue to grow in these markets, you start to see them actually start to balance off as far as what their loan-to-values are on these loans. They took them out, they used them as a piggy bank, they traded their long-term assets, right. their house, for short-term assets, and the I fancy can, car and the, the TV. Piper. Now they have to pay the piper. And then the home prices drop, so they became ending up having negative equity, but we're starting to see the negative equity start to return. Mr. Shapiro, uh, there was a new survey it was released today by the MacArthur Foundation it found that a significant majority of Americans believe the country is still not past the housing crisis that began seven years ago are they right absolutely correct we think of markets like New York or San Francisco clearly past cyclical peaks but the majority of the country was still over 30 percent below we're nowhere near a housing recovery and why In fact, is housing that? lags is that, is that jobs is it wages it's all got to do with all the same issues it's been household formation we were producing 1.2 million households a year for 40 years and we're producing 600,000 people were doubling and tripping up, staying home with their parents. Now we're starting to see those households starting to form again and start to come back in and demand to come back in. But until we start seeing the credit come in and people actually being able to buy the home, because who cares what the interest rates are if you can't get a mortgage? So when we start to see the credit coming back in, the jobs will hopefully will continue and what wages are slowly starting to go up, I think you'll start to continue to see a recovery. We're seeing really good numbers. I mean, the case show is up over 5% again this year. 
So I think we're going to continue to see that trend in these other markets. Well, speaking about bad timing, though, I mean, right now the Fed is about to raise interest rates. I mean, you talk about trying to loosen up some credit. I mean, at this point, you know, that's introducing more volatility into the credit market. It is, but I think that, again, if, if you can't get a mortgage, it doesn't matter what the rate is. So as long as there starts to have more initiatives to actually provide credit to those people that they can actually buy the homes, I think it's good. And why they're raising rates? Because the economy is, it seems to be growing. Mm -hmm. The economy is growing. I'll take that any day um, and higher interest rates.